Right now on The Breakfast Club, it is time for Food for Mood with Dr. Judy Workman. Judy is the co-author of the Serotonin Power Diet, serotoninpowerdiet.com. Also, before her voice was still, A Friendship in the Shadow of ALS and A Journal of a Duck Midwife. We won't quack around here. We'll bring it. So right now, let us connect with Judy Workman. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, Judy. <laughs> Hi. I don't know what happened. All of a sudden, you were there, and then... I wasn't in your word. I thought we did a world class intro. I thought maybe your I thought maybe your dog attacked the phone. <laughs> <laughs> it's possible. <laughs> Except she's too short to be sure. He did a world class intro and he'd gotten to everything and he had even cracked a, he had even quacked a joke about a, jer- a, j- a duck midwifery and then nothing. It all fell apart. Crickets. With with the Anyway, before you start, I have a question to ask you. Sure. If you lined up 10 people and said, you know, what you eat could affect your mood, what do you think the split in the reaction would be? That's a great question. Uh, I, I, you know, I'm not really sure. I think um, people who, uh, they're, they're, they're certainly the, Jill, they're certainly the people who are carbohydrate phobic, who will tell you that if you eat carbohydrate, and I've heard this, especially sugar, which is a, you know, a simple form of carbohydrate, that when they eat sugar, they'll feel depressed, anxious, tired, um, unable to concentrate, dizzy, because they are convinced that eating carbohydrates is going to have a negative effect on their cognitive and, and emotional uh, functions. Um, and there are other people who will say, uh, you know, certainly if you ask people about alcohol, they'll say it may affect their mood. Um, I'm not sure how many people would say that eating certain foods will put them in a good mood other than, you know, on the other end of the spectrum is chocolateholics who will say, you know, that whenever they eat chocolate, they are in a good mood. Um, but, you know, clearly neither of their responses is based on any kind of uh, real evidence, biochemical, neurochemical, or what have you. It's simply a subjective feeling. And then when you say to people, well, how would you know? truly, other than just being subjective. They haven't got the foggiest idea, and yet it, it's very easy to do experiments to show whether a food would affect your mood or not, and all you do is just have people uh, self-report their moods on an empty stomach, um, maybe after two or three hours after a, a meal, and then you uh, give them disguised, of course, you know, it's, uh, you know, the thing that they say is going to make their mood worse, let's say carbohydrates or something that's going to make their meal, the mood feel better, like chocolate, um, and, uh, and give them also at some point uh, a placebo, you know, on another occasion, and then you measure their mood, with, you measure their mood um, about, you know, when you know the food has been, or the drink has been digested, whatever's in that drink has been digested, about maybe 45 minutes, an hour later, and you see whether their mood really in, really changes. So, but I'm sure even if you do something like this and you show somebody, well, you know, you had that um, carbohydrate and you really said you were going to be dizzy and unable to concentrate and be in a terrible mood, but you look, you know, you're just the same as you were before you had it. Uh, they probably wouldn't believe you. Gotcha. All right. Right? Yeah. No, I think you're absolutely right. Just... <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but, but, you know, the one, the one thing that I wanted to, to mention today is something that um, occurred to me when, when I was, uh, occurred to me because I've started to take up again a, 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 a an instrument, well, let me just make sure that I, do, um, that I haven't been playing for many, many years, a flute, and I realized that it takes a great deal of patience to learn how to play or replay an instrument, especially when you have to work on things like your fingering and also how, how you know, you sound when you blow into it. And, um, and I thought, you know, when people start on a diet, uh, it, they are never told that this is going to be a long process and a process during which you have to actually develop some kind of, of skill in in um, being able to lose the weight but also keep the weight after keep the weight off after you finish the diet. People are always told that the diet is going to be oh, uh, diet is going to be very um, short lived. They're going to they're going to gain they're going to lose weight very quickly, and they're not going to have. Um, any problems in, in keeping their weight loss weight off once once they actually lose lose their weight and you know, if people approach a diet the same way you might approach oh let's say learning to play golf 
um, which I gather is a very difficult procedure, um, or tennis or skiing or, you know, again, learning a language, you would be told right off, look, you're not going to be able to do this right away. I mean, you may be able to say bonjour <laughs> in my terrible French, you know, after the first lesson, but you're not going to be able to have a philosophical discussion in French, you know, for many years, and you better be patient if you want, if that's your goal. And, and that's the same thing is true, again, you know, with any kind of sort of sports uh, procedure, you know, learning or, or a musical instrument or what have you. But the thing about dieting is that people are never told, look, it's really going to take a long time for you to be able to learn this new skill. And what you need in order to be able to be successful is patience. I've never heard that word mentioned in association with weight loss. I think Marshall probably understands that because he is very patient, and he's been very patient in his very long weight loss efforts, and it's something that he certainly has learned. But and, you're and never he, told that. And, in fact, you're never told that, gee, you know, if you don't do very well this week, it's okay. It's like, you know, I go to a flu lesson. I can't blow anything. But it's okay, my teacher said. You know, it, sometimes that happens. You're never told that. You're told, oh, you haven't lost weight this week? Well, gee, something must be wrong. Let's figure out what it is. You're never told that, you know, you're in this situation of losing weight. It's like being in a tunnel with not a clear view as to where that end is. You really can't see that light. And you know, somebody has, people have to say to you, it's okay, just do it step by step by step, and eventually you will get to the end. That kind of support is never given. But the opposite is given. Oh, go on this diet, you'll lose weight really quickly, and that'll be it. You'll be done. You'll be finished, and you'll, lose, you'll keep the weight off for the rest of your life, which, is, of course, is a total lie. Well, there are two, two things that I want to say about that. Thing one, um, think how many scam diets would have to go away if you did it, if you did it like that, A. So you just lost a, a huge industry. Like, right. Hey, you, you know, because the best selling point of a diet is just do this. You barely have to participate, and when you're done, you, which is just unheard of. On the, you know, it's, it's amazing. It's very curious on this planet that you'd think that would even work, but that's how things are sold. And the second thing is, you know, if not for, uh, uh, you know. You have to definitely decide that something is going to work for it to. I mean, assuming, assuming that the 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 diet or the arrangement is you know it's common sense and workable, um, and not saying just like eat earthworms and you'll feel better. Um, right. You you then have to decide as an individual that you are going to do this and that you're in it for the long haul. Yes. Just like playing an instrument. I mean, I was so offended when playing the flute. I mean, I I, I took flute first uh, before I bailed and went to guitar. Um, oh. And then my fingers. But but I loved the idea of playing the flute, and I loved the way that it sounded, but I thought I would be able to pick it up and play it. <laughs> Big surprise. Big, horrible surprise. That's my right. flute teacher was not as patient as yours. <laughs> But, but see, that's the point. And, you know, when you're a child, you know, you're allowed to be impatient. But when you're an adult, you aren't. I mean, you, because there's nothing that, there's, there should not be the feeling of instant gratification. I mean, the instant gratification comes you look at the scale and you've lost a couple of pounds. But that's going to go away because as your body adjusts to less calories, fewer calories, uh, it holds on to those calories, the metabolic rate goes down. And you, you may go a couple of weeks without losing a discernible amount of weight. You know, it may be your scale doesn't register half pound losses, for example, and you have to be patient. And, and the problem is that if you don't lose the weight and you go, let's say, to a Weight Watchers, oh, you haven't lost weight this week, what's wrong? Rather than, gee, okay, you know, hold on, you're, you're going to be losing the weight, be patient, it's going to happen. You just and, and, and you're learning a new skill and maybe you're going to make mistakes because nobody expects you to play at Carnegie Hall, you know, after starting the piano and playing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. You, it takes, as they say, practice to get to Carnegie Hall. And, and the same thing is you get, have to practice and you have to be patient. And but nobody will buy that concept. Jill, if I had a, a book saying, it's going to take you a long time to lose the weight and you have to be patient, you know, it would be on the remainder list within two seconds. Oh, yeah. No question. That, that was my first point. So we're going to have to figure out how to uh, uh, square it. We're going to have to figure out how to square this because really the very first thing you have to do is, when I say commit, you know, in the same way that you want to be able to play Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, you got to, you know, sign up for it. 
That's right. And the last thing is, what people do is they dump the diet. I mean, I've, I've seen this all the time, and they'll come in and say, oh, the diet failed me. Well, that's not exactly the case, but I'm going to try another one. So it's like you're selling the flute, Jill, and they say, I really can't do this. I'm going to try the saxophone tomorrow. And then, oh, I can't do that. I'm going to do the violin. You know, it's going from one to another to another thing. Well, this one is really going to work. And that is the other thing that people do, and it's so wrong. And... We will leave it there. Thank you very much, okay, Dr. Yeah, Judy Wertman, Food for Moose. And you can hear Judy, of course, every Thursday morning here on Robin Hood Radio and on RobinHoodRadio.com. Click on On Demand, Food for Mood with Judy Wertman.